So we can use this slice and rhymer function to estimate um, the American and European option. And if we go into the modules here, we can see our slice and rhymer function, which truncates the zeros, right? Estimates in a relatively fast way and the option. So we've used a step size here of ten. We can increase that in a moment. And we've set this column equal to the preceding column. So as I change variables here, as I change variables here, they are reflected in here as well. So we have a European and American option. And we have then set out a data table where I've generated both the European option and the American option for different stock prices. Okay, and in addition to that, I've set out here an intrinsic value for the option, and the intrinsic value of the option for the call option at least, the intrinsic value is just the maximum of s minus x, where x here is the exercise. So for each of the each of these cells, we have the corresponding stock price and we subtract away the exercise and we take the maximum of that difference or a zero. Okay, note I've dollarized the the exercise. And likewise over here, right, I've set out an intrinsic value. Um however it's a little bit more complicated than intrinsic. I should largely say it's the lower bound for the European option. And the intrinsic value is the lower bound for the American option. So if you like, if you want to, why are we introducing these two series in here? Well, largely it's got to do with estimating uh, the lower bound for the American option and the lower bound for the European option. Okay. And, um, okay, we could graph these. Now I've changed a little bit the variables or this the if we look at the step size here the stock price is changing from 10 20 30 40 50 and then i do 81 82 and so on i go on step size of one and then up to 120 and then i go in step size of 10 20 30 40 50 and the reason why I changed the step size around the close to the exercise is that uh, this lower bound condition will change um, from uh, where X is located here. So that the, the outline, if we take the paper by um, a Whaley here, valuation of American future options when we when we estimate the um, European and American parabolas for time values okay for if we took the intrinsic value of the option it would just be this line here when we take the lower bound so that's the lower bound for the American option it's also the intrinsic value if we take the lower bound for the European option, its dimensions change and it departs from where we have x here. So, um, it might just take a little bit, slightly bigger view here. So, the parabola here is obtained in this particular paper by Baron Odyssey Whaley. Here, I propose to use Lyson Rhymer uh, to capture the parabola. There comes a point where the parabola converges to the intrinsic value of the option. So that's true of the American option. Okay. Then we have the European option and it has an intrinsic value. And it, with the case of the futures, it's F minus X E negative RT. And the, if you like, the parabola here that we observe is the, could be the Black-Scholes or again, I could, 
I'm going to use Lyson Rhymer here to construct this particular parabola as well. But it could be Black Shoals that's driving this. And the Black Shoals parabola will just become tangent to the lower bound on the European and will never be inferior to the lower bound. The lower bound for the European option where the underlying is the futures is this f minus x e negative rt. In the case of a stock where the spot price, right, the lower bound is this maximum s e negative qt minus k e negative rt. Now to observe what the effect of that would be, we could graph for the different stock prices then, we could graph the Ameri European, American, the intrinsic value and the lower bound for the European. So let's highlight each of, these, each of these. And in a very straightforward way, I'll, go, I'll come over here to insert, scatter graph, and I think I'll go with, let's try this. Okay, now maybe I'll do that again. And select a slightly different option. So insert again, scatter graph, and I think I'll go with this one, okay? Now the graph that we observe here, let's pull this up a little bit. The graph that we obtain here basically outlines what? It's an outline of a couple of things, right? The um, European option and the intrinsic value. Now the intrinsic value here is when we looked at the, the lower bound for the European option, okay previously in the Whaley paper what we observed is the lower bound and the uh, lo the lower bound for the American options they converge here at X but that's not the case with this Europe with this uh, um, American option based on the spot price okay now if we if we made the dividend equal to zero okay which would imply that we took a B here would be equal to also so B is the, the uh, cost of carry and if this was equal to zero it would mean sorry if this was equal to three percent it would imply that the dividend would be equal to zero let's verify that so dividend goes to three okay in that instance uh, what we observe is both the European and American options, both European and American time values converge, but the lower bound on the European option is now higher than the American option because the lower bound on the European option is S E negative QT minus X E negative RT. And uh, the because E negative QT is equal to one S minus X X for the um, so just to demonstrate that in terms of the maths here, if this were equal to zero, dividend equal to zero, then S minus S E negative RT, that's greater than S minus X. So you would never exercise the European option early when dividends are equal to zero for an, uh, an American call option. Okay, the values coincide, American European values, are the same because in fact the American option is equal to the European option time value. Then if we uh, take, if we make uh, R equal to Q, so if we make R equal to Q, in, in other words the cost of carry B is zero, so Q also becomes 3%, then we can see some detail uh, opening up here. So the what do we observe? Well, largely, at least initially, the American European options look very similar, time value. But the uh, the uh, the graph, if you like, behaves pretty much the same as the graph portrayed here in Figure One of um, Robert Whaley American future options and that is when uh, we want to value future options we can actually use the spot price if we set R equal to Q 
r equal to q for um, the spot option then, then our graph uh, that we have here right follows very closely the graph outlined by uh, Robert Whaley in American Future Options so the behavior of the European and American option when r is set equal to q then the American uh, spot option European spot option uh, they behave in very similar fashion to the European and American futures option valuation so again part of what we're looking at here is European versus American valuation and Lysenreimer uh, does this in a relatively efficient way okay we can value the option and observe some of the principles and uh, conditions and properties of American and, and European options so again if the if the rate of drift were equal so if the if R negative Q or the cost of carry the difference was equal to zero and um, R is not equal to Q then we get a departure from the Whaley diagram and then um, we if we set uh, this equal to zero then the diagram that we get here has many of the attributes of the diagram here suggested by Whaley for the American futures um, option right and um, if the dividend uh, becomes um, if we allow the dividend to become um, positive more positive than the um, than the interest rate so if the dividend is pushed up to 7% here by setting B equal to negative 4 we can see the behavior of the European and American options in terms of different stock prices their values diverge uh, very significantly indeed uh, when the behavior uh, um, when the European and American option the lower we set B here if we set B equal to zero then we find um, that when R is equal to Q we find that yes there is a difference between the f American and the futures option but the the difference is is um, is significant and the behavior looks uh, a lot like the uh, behavior outlined in the Whaley diagram and then when we set B equal to 0 0.03 in other words the difference is equal to zero then the American and European option their behavior is the same in terms of the time values and that's because the lower bound the European lower bound becomes higher than the American uh, uh, lower bound thus resulting in both options being equal to each other so if we look here at the values presented for Lyson Reimer European and American options when uh, the dividend is equal to zero for call options then we can observe that the value for the European and American um, exercise types their values are the same in each instance as we go through the different stock prices so at 105 stock price both options European American both equal to each other when we get to 230 the value of the European American options are both equal to each other okay and that's what would be suggested by finance theory as well